That's right, you've seen the title. Today, I'm going to be talking about some of the most overrated things that we players do in Football Manager. Now, I've got five things I want to go through today that aren't necessarily mistakes, but just things that people put too much of a focus on when playing FM without really thinking about the implications of what these things mean. Before we see the overrated picks, though, what I want you guys to do is let me know in the comments what your most overrated thing in Football Manager is, or even most overrated player that you've used in FM. Um, I'd love to hear it in the comments down below so we can get a big list outside of the ones I've spoke about and don't forget to like the video if you do enjoy it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. A massive thanks to you guys for getting us to 180k subs but we're going to keep pushing to hopefully hit that 200k mark eventually. With that being said let's check out the first thing and that is tactical symmetry. Now like I say by doing what I'm about to speak about it doesn't mean anyone's making a mistake. You can make your own tactics, play your own way, whatever you want to do. I just think people do this without thinking about the alternatives. What I mean by tactical symmetry is if we were to split this tactic here straight down the middle, it would be the same on the left and the right in terms of roles. So for example, we've got two wing backs on support, two ball playing defenders on the defense duty, two central midfielders on support, and two inside forwards on the attack duty. Now I see a lot of people, particularly newcomers, making tactics like this. Maybe they'll occasionally change up the midfield roles to have, say, a Mazala there, and maybe a deep line playmaker, whatever it might be. Obviously, it doesn't really work here we've got two deep line playmakers but sometimes you'll see a variation in midfield is what I'm trying to say but very often you will see full backs center backs and wide players set to have the same roles on the same sides of a pitch that isn't necessarily the way that real football is played in real life it will work in FM guaranteed I'm sure there won't be a big issue with it but if you look at some of the best let's say center back partnerships in the world when are they ever asked to do the exact same job it's not actually that common a lot of the time tactics take into account a player's ability maybe you've got two center backs one that's better on the ball and one that's maybe got a bit more recovery pace but isn't as good as bringing the ball out for that reason you might go for say central defender on cover and it's just something that I see all the time something very overrated to have symmetry in a tactic now that's not to say that you have to you know have a really weird shape that looks something like this no that is also great to do if you want to but the tactic that I use for this Newcastle rebuild for example just had a bit of variation in it we've got a wing back on the attack duty one on support he's going to overlap because this wide players on support as an inverted winger meanwhile this guy's not has to go as far forward because he's more of an attacking player you get what I'm going at here I don't think you need to have necessarily maximum symmetry in your team lots of people do it without thinking if you're someone that doesn't congratulations but next time you are picking your roles in your team have a think about it do you really need two ball playing defenders on defend do you need two wing backs on support try and change it up a little bit even if you want to get more creative bring something like this into the team where you actually change the shape of it to be less symmetrical if you get what I'm trying to say either way that's the first overrated thing bugbear that I see people making symmetrical tactics before we get into the other four things you might have mentioned I just spoke about this Newcastle rebuild this is actually a video that's going to be on my channel which you can find linked in the description below over there we've done plenty of other rebuilds with clubs like Newcastle that are expected to do quite well and sometimes even teams in the third tier of Germany so make sure you head on over and check that out and I'm sure you'll appreciate the content but let's get into the other things that I want to speak about. Now, if you watch any of the FM content that I've done on FM Scout over the last few years, you'll have known this one's coming. Star ratings for me are one of the biggest bugbears in Football Manager. They're so overrated. A lot of people come over from, say, FIFA and just expect there to be some kind of overall rating, and star ratings do seem like the likely equivalent of that, but they really aren't to be trusted. They're usually inaccurate, and let me give you a few quick reasons why. Firstly, if you have a five-star player in the fourth tier of England, that doesn't mean he's going to be a five-star player in the Premier your league. Your star ratings are based on the players in your squad. Take Sandro Tonali for example, he's our highest rated player star ratings wise. Firstly, he might not be our best player, but even if he is, the only reason he's got four and a half stars is that's in comparison to everybody else in this team. He wouldn't be a four and a half star player everywhere, which is a misconception that a lot of people have. So don't put too much reliance on these star ratings. They'll fluctuate based on form. It's your staff that give you these star ratings and they'll actually take into account things that aren't to do with football, whether he's an international footballer, whether he's counts towards certain squad registration rules. All of that's great, but doesn't necessarily mean he's a better player for your team than someone else. Not necessarily. And you can also see the person that gives you the report and their opinion might be wrong. Jason Tyndall, our assistant manager, gave us this report, four and a half stars of Mark Gurhey. If we take a look at Jason, he hasn't actually got great judging player ability or judging player potential. So what you can do is find someone better. Let's take our director of football. What's he got? Dan Ashworth. He's much better, right? So I'm now going to go to our staff screen, responsibilities, 
and then you can go down to reports. On the player reports section, we can now select our director of football. If we can find him, there we go, Dan Ashworth, hit confirm. And suddenly when we now go and check out our star ratings, they're gonna be different. So Nali's no longer a four and a half star player. And that proves exactly what I'm trying to say. Don't judge those star ratings too much. They'll fluctuate, they will change. The amount of times that I've had a young player, it says his potential maximum is three stars. And by the time he's fully developed, he's actually a four and a half star, five star player has happened countless times. So really don't trust those star ratings, guys. They are so overrated. The next thing is something that Chelsea have been guilty of in real life currently. And that is trying to create a team full of wonder kids or a team of young players. Now, this is obviously great for a few reasons. One, because you get these young stars that can develop into world-class talents. Two, they're going to make you more money. They're not going to lose money when they're going from a young player into a player in their prime. Whereas if you sign them in their prime and then they got older, they're not going to be worth as much. So there are benefits to having young players in your team. Don't get me wrong. But if you only have young players, which seems to be a big thing in the FM community, once a player hits 28, he's sold, he's out the door, you don't want any old heads at your club, that's really not the way to go. I've been guilty of it a few times in my own saves, but if we have a look at the age rating of this Newcastle squad a few years in, we have got some young players developing emerging talents, 23, 22, 21 year olds, but there's also some older heads, 29, 30, and even a 35 year old Callum Wilson. Now, arguably, I should have a few more older players in this team in their 30s, and the reason is a lot of these guys make good mentors for your young players. Outside of a few rare cases in Football Manager, the older you are, the better your mental attributes are, the more of a leader you'll be and in general that's how it works in real life football these young players 21 year olds will look up to the experienced pros and learn from them and you can actually use these older players even if they're not going to play for you to try and help the personalities of other players at your club if you go to training and go to mentoring you can set up mentoring groups let's call this one uh, old for example you go in you add someone with a good personality in this case Mark Cucurella age 28 is a driven personality I've also added Callum Wilson to that group so now Callum Wilson and Cucurella with decent personalities of Resolute and Driven are going to try and help this young player. That way we should hopefully see over time a change in his personality. Now I haven't gone in depth here about mentoring. There's a whole video about it, about who can be good mentors and who can't. You want to make sure the older player's got better determination than the young player he's mentoring and maybe some traits that you want him to pick up. But in general, older players are useful and the game even proves that to you. If you go to the squad planner screen and then go to experience matrix, there's a whole tab that shows you what kind of squad you've got in terms of age. You've got experienced players peak emerging and developing you want to have a real mix a lot of the time people will just have emerging and development talents make sure you've got a lot of players in their peak and I should really have a few extra players in the experience section but right now we have got Callum Wilson we also lost Pope and Trippier to retirement at the end of last season so we have lost some of the older players in the squad which I need to replace here but we're a few seasons in you get the idea make sure you're not just creating a young team of wonder kids have some older players in there too it might not look as cool but I promise you you'll get better results from your team Overrated thing number four in Football Manager is giving game time to young players. Now, yes, of course, when you've got a young talent on your hands, you want to try and develop them, you want to give them game time. But so often I see people doing this, where they find a young player that's came through 15, 16, 17 years of age, and they promote them into the first team because they've supposedly got five-star potential. Let's say Kostas Kalabakas here. He is supposedly our best youth player. For that reason, a lot of you might be inclined to bring him straight into the first team and give him football where you can to try and help him reach that potential. Now, is that going to negatively affect him? Maybe not necessarily. It depends on the amount of game time he'll get in the first team. But what I'll always say is if you've got a player that's still 17, 16 or 15, before they reach 18, you do not necessarily need to give them first team football. They'll get just as good development staying in the youth teams, being progressed through those from the under 18s to the under 21s, under 23s, whatever it is you have. Make sure they're playing football for those youth teams and not just sitting there. So make sure your under 18s are playing matches. But as long as you've got some decent academy coaches, these players will develop more than good enough in those youth levels. And then by the time they're 18, that's when you need to give them game time either at your club or loan them out. But you don't necessarily need to give a 16 or 17 year old first team football like I say it wouldn't necessarily massively affect them negatively but if you think about it in the sense of this guy here, how many games is he actually going to play for Newcastle if we promote him to the first team? Maybe, you know, three bench appearances a season at most if we're trying to force him in. And that'll go up slowly and slowly over the years. But realistically, if we kept him in the under 18s, he'll train every day. He'll play 30 games a season. And then by the time he's 17, then think about bringing him up. Once he hits 18, make the decision on game time at your club or on loan. But you really don't need to be giving first team football straight away to these young players that might not be ready for it. You won't 
won't get massive benefits from it. And the final thing that I want to cover is the focus on certain attributes based on positions of players. What I mean by this is a lot of people won't sign a striker because their finishing is low. I mean, Isaac is a bad example. He's a great finisher. But say Isaac had 10 finishing. A lot of people would look at him and go, he's not going to be a good goal scorer. Trust me, in Football Manager, you don't necessarily need some of the attributes that you think you need. Now, you might have heard this year in Football Manager, there was a big debate about whether certain attributes even mattered because someone out there did a test where he gave someone, I think, 20 for every single physical attribute, but one for finishing, uh, you know, one for passing, whatever it might be. And they found that this player ended up tearing up the league. And whilst there is some issues with that, I think there is also a big reason for it that a lot of people have spoke about already. And that is if you're a defender and you're coming up against a striker with maximum strength, the fastest player you've ever seen, he's better in the air than anyone you've ever seen. Even if he misses a net on a few occasions, he's going to create so many chances because he's the fastest player ever. He's the strongest player ever. He's the best in the air ever. And that was one of the big weaknesses of that test and of that big drama that happened a few months ago. If you're in the FM community, you might have heard about it. If not, don't let it bother you. But either way, there's just some attributes that you really don't need to be that high. Yes, it's great to have them. Don't get me wrong. Having 15 finishing is better than 14 and 13. You're going to get more goals from it. But if you've got someone that has really good physical attributes, if they're strong, if they're quick, if they're good in the air, if they're good mentally, don't put so much worry on that one particular attribute. I've had strikers with 10 finishing get 30 goals a season. I've had midfielders with 11 passing get 20 assists a year. You really can balance all these things out depending on what kind of roles you use players in, the way you play them, the traits you add to them. So don't let one attribute put you off a player. Mind you, if he was bad in 10 areas, yes, don't go for him, obviously. Uh, and if there was a clear weakness to his game, say mentally, he was bad in all of the mental areas, again, maybe don't sign him. I think a lot of people put too much importance on certain things when actually the attribute might not matter that much because he makes up for it in every other area of his game. So just bear that in mind. Don't feel like every attribute needs to be perfect before you sign a player. My general rule of thumb is if you want a player to play a certain role, let's say we wanted Alexander Isaac as a Trek Artista, right? It then highlights the attributes for you that he needs for that role. If there was three of them maybe that I wasn't happy with, then maybe I'd look elsewhere. But if I had a look at this and maybe his passing wasn't great and his composure wasn't great, but everything else was fine you're all right the same way if his acceleration wasn't great his balance wasn't great but everything else was good you're going to be all right. It really won't have that much of a big effect. Obviously, there are bonuses to have them, but don't worry about it too much. One attribute, two attributes aren't going to completely curtail a player's career and make him play terribly. So there you go. That's another overrated thing in FM. That's five things that I think are overrated. Let me know yours in the comments. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.